Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start to first take one of the uh, reaction of n pi star reactivity uh, that is uh, we said we will start with alpha cleavage reaction today we will understand alpha cleavage reactions If you take a ketone and um, if you shine light, it undergoes uh, a type of photo decarbonylation. <coughs> and this reaction was first uh, observed by Norrish, um, you know, R. G. W. Norrish. He is the person who first observed this photo decarbonylation of ketone. That is why we call this alpha cleavage reaction. You can, otherwise, you can call us. Norrish type 1 process. Right? So, you can call this alpha cleavage reaction or you can call this as a Norrish type 1 process. Basically, there are three types of ketones in which you can observe this reactions. Uh, one you can see it in a saturated acyclic ketones where you can see alpha cleavage reaction taking place. Another you can see it in saturated cyclic ketones. Then you can observe in beta gamma unsaturated ketones. <coughs> So, this three ketones uh, try to do this photo decarbonylation reaction or you call them as a Norrish type 1 process. So, what I will do is that we will take one ketones like initially we will take saturated acyclic ketone and see some examples how this undergoes a Norrish type. Then we go for saturated cyclic system where you can take 6 membered, 5 membered, 4 membered rings and see how they undergoes this. And finally, we will work out with beta gamma unsaturated ketones. So, <coughs> first I will take system of saturated acyclic ketones. See, if you take a saturated acyclic ketones, most of the time you see like 4 in UV spectrum. If you take the UV of this saturated acyclic ketones, you can see 4 bands. Okay? And this 4 bands will be centered, one will be at 155 nanometer, one you can see at 170 nanometer, another around 195 nanometer, another is 280 nanometer. So, you can see this four type of absorption bands when you take for an simple saturated acyclic ketones. And this 280 nanometer is the one where you do your n pi star transition. This is your n pi star transition. It is a little bit weak transition, but you can do your chemistry there. That means, if you shine a light greater than 280 or around 280 nanometer you can do your n pi star excitation. Then you will see your n pi star reactivity. Clear? So, most of the time we will be shining light greater than 280 nanometers. So, uh, now I will take a first example where I have a ketone, okay, where the both side of my, both the arm of my ketone 
are symmetrical are same ok. So, we will take first that type of ketone simple ketone for example, I am taking C 6 H 5 C H 2 carbonyl where both are symmetrical both the end both the arms of this ketones are same. So, we are taking a simple ketone. Now, what we will do? We can do this most of this Norwich type 1 reactions can be encountered in gas phase. Okay. There are some examples where you can do it in the solution also, but most of the time it is encountered in the gas phase. So, if I shine this with light okay, greater than 280 or 310 nanometer, you know that what you get? You get your I call this as S 1 which you have studied, then it undergoes a very nice intersystem crossing So, I get my triplet set, you can call them as T 1. You can put with the spin also or you can directly write S 1 and T 1. Instead of writing the structure, you can always write S 1 T 1 that all that also means that you can just write S 1 then undergoes an intersystem crossing to T 1 like this also you can write for simple. Um. So, now what happens? Um, now, this alpha cleavage okay, alpha to your carbonyl hmm, can that particular bond can cleave the excited state. It can be this side or it can be on the other side both are same since you are taking a symmetrical type of molecule. Okay. So, you will get So, what you are getting? You are getting a acyl radical and you are getting an alkyl radical. So, you are taking a ketone just you are shining light the alpha to the carbonyl cleaves to give you two types of radicals. One you get an acyl as well as an alkyl radical. This entire process where photochemistry happens is called as a primary process. Because all your photochemistry is happened in this region. So, excitation, cleavage till to you get acyl and alkyl radical is done in light okay, and it happens in a and that is why you call this as a primary process <laughs> clear. After that what happens? Now, you have your acyl radical which you have generated C 6 H 5 C dot plus you have your alkyl radical of this friend. Now, what happens this C 6 H 5 that is your acyl radical undergoes decarbonylation. Hmm? That means, you get a cleavage here. Hmm? So, you get C 6 H 5 C H 2 dot plus you get your have a decarbonylation happening followed by your decarbonylation step you get a radical recombination see now i have a radical c6 h5 ch2 dot now this c6 h5 ch2 dot can react with
get radical recombination. Okay. So, I get this. So, this two process we call this as secondary. So, in the primary process it is the photochemistry happening place where you have formation of acyl as well as alkyl radical. Um, in the case of your uh, secondary process is a radical chemistry. So, you get an acyl radical, it undergoes a decarbonylization to give you a alkyl which then undergoes a radical recombination to give you the product. If I write then I have C 6 H 5 C S 2 carbonyl this is the overall chemistry of this. Now, we will take a second type of example. First, we take a ketone, a cyclic ketone, where both the arms are same. Now, we will take a ketone in which both the arms are different and see how the Norwich type 1 reaction happens there. I am taking this ketone now. Now, what happens once I shine light, it goes to singlet that you can always write you get S 1 uh, sorry S 1 and then it undergoes an intersystem crossing to my T 1 that is fine. So, I have taken a triplet excited ketone. So, it gets excited to my triplet T 1. It is in a T 1 state. Now, uh, the you have to think about your alpha cleavage reaction. So, I can say I can cleave this side call it as an A or I can cleave this side call it as B. Okay. So, we will write both the possibilities. So, if I cleave here, I might get methyl radical get this radical ok. That is if I go I A, if I go to take the root of B, then I should get So, I can get I can get this 2. Now, you have to decide like uh, which will be the path. Okay. Uh, so, you can take A or B which will be the 1 B. Uh, so, you are you are thinking about the first thing that is the most stable radical you can do that alpha cleavage on that direction. 
So, that is the first thing. It is not generally all the case. I will tell you how it varies. It also depends upon other sources. But initially for this example, yes, it is clear that you are getting a stable radical. That is why you are taking the alpha cleavage in that direction. Right? So, this is your primary process. Now, we will go and do the secondary process. So, we are saying this is the right one. So, it is not going because of the stability of radical. Now, you know what is the first step in your secondary process decarbonylation, right. So, I can take my radical and do my you get this, right. Now, what happens? You have your radical recombination. So, radical recombination here you have to think because it is not like a simple. In the previous example, you had a type of symmetrical. In this case, it, both arms are different. So, your methyl radical can combine to give you. So, this possibility you can get. Okay or you can get this any other your tertiary butyl radical can get this products. So, it looks to be simple chemistry, but you have to identify all the products. So, the key is that can be under uh, see the secondary process all the radical recombination can be write it up. So, if you if I jot this reaction, if I summarize this basically I say that I have C H 3 I get one of this product. Missed any product? Hmm? Any other products? In this hydrogen abstraction, yeah, that I will go. That's good. So we'll take another example in which I will explain you how it happens. Okay, that's good. We basically are saying the particular hydrogen abstraction happening. Yeah, yes, that you can see also. Uh, so, this is one of the where you have two different things of 
symmetry. Now, what we will take? We will take one another type of acyclic ketones, where you will have a different arms, but you will have a beta hydrogen. In that case, what will be the primary process and secondary process? Hmm, that will be a little bit interesting. So, that will be our third example. Okay. Then we will get into the much more fundamental of it. Any doubt? So, I am taking a ketone layer. Okay. So, I say that I have a beta hydrogen here. Hmm? Carbonyl, you have an alpha and you have a beta. So, your carbon has an hydrogen. So, I take ketone in this type okay, and see what happens here. As you said, yeah, once I shine light, it goes to the singlet, then it undergoes an intersystem crossing to a triplet. From the triplet, we we say that this is an excited ketone from your triplet it happens. So, I say T 1 so both the sides are there okay. as you know I can do an alpha cleavage here hmm? or I can do an alpha cleavage in this direction A B. the rest of the molecule right again you can based on your stability you can say that uh, which part you are going to take so this which of this will be better this one yes so we say this is okay so that's your primary process right Done. So, we will see how the secondary process happens in this. This will be interesting to see the secondary process. So, in the secondary process, you have seen that the first secondary process is what? Decarbonylization followed by radical recombination. So, shall we do that? So, I will get my CS2 dot plus I see you out. Then I have to do my radical recombination. So, this is So, if I do my radical recombination, so I can have my dot plus I get one of this product. Right. So, the other product will be CH3 CH2 dot plus I 
get one more product I can uh, so in the secondary process the first that is decarbonylation followed by intramolecular uh, followed by your radical recombination I can get three products okay one two three now what happens if you have a beta hydrogen okay one more secondary process happens that is your intramolecular hydrogen abstraction that will take place so we'll see how that secondary process happens. So, I have two system now like I have my two radicals CH3, CH2 carbonyl dot plus I have my CH dot. Say I have now this two radicals so one, one secondary process was decarbonylation followed by radical recombination. Here you can see if these two radicals are there what they can do. I can take this radical okay this radical can abstract this hydrogen and then I can make a double bond here yes that you can do. So, you might get then what? So, you get an an aldehyde plus you will get to a get your alkene right ok. Uh, is this intramolecular hydrogen abstraction that is we call this as A, hmm? this another intramolecular hydrogen abstraction can also happen that is we call as B for example, I have my see it is a simple reaction you can now see how many products it is trying to form. Now, why this cannot pick up this sorry this is a radical it can do like this no? this radical can take this hydrogen that is possible. So, if it takes what we will get CH 3 CH what is this? So, you get ketene the formation of ketene is the driving force for the reaction. So, you get a ketene plus fine. If you have a solvent like ROH, so you know what happens ketene reacts with your yeah that you can form your ester right if it is if, if the reaction is done in methanol or ethanol solvent if it is gas based then you can see your ketene ketene will be there then it undergoes decarbonation other process happens of the ketene but in the solvent you can trap your ketenes so see it's a simple process i have taken a simple 
uh, acyclic ketone and you, you can see how many product it gives. Uh, it's, that's why Norris type 1 is not only on decarbonylization. Yeah, the primary process is decarbonylization, but uh, then you get once you get alpha cleavage, then you get your acyl and alkyl radical. Then it's more about the radical reactivity. Okay. So shall we summarize this reaction and write all the products so that at least we know how many products this has given? You have a CS3, CS2, you have a carbonyl, you have CH, CH3. CH3. So, we have this. So, you should think in like if it is undergoing a decarbonylization followed by radical recombination, then what are the products you can expect? Then you write the products of that. Right, you say that yes, I will expect CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, CH2, CH3. This one I can expect. Right, then I can expect another product CS3, CS2, CS2, CH3. This I can expect, or I can expect so I say that I am expecting this three products because. 1, 2 and 3, you can find out 3 products. Okay. So, we will call this as a decarbonylation followed by your radical recombination. Then we will write from here and we will say that it is an intermolecular hydrogen abstraction. Then what I can expect? If it is from Abstracting this beta hydrogen, then you write as you get your aldehyde plus you get your alkene. All right. So, if it is other way around. Then you get your ketene plus get your right. So, you are now getting three sets of products one radical recombination product that is after decarbonylization, another you are getting intramolecular hydrogen abstraction, there you, are, you can take um, hydrogen from both the beta hydrogen, then you can get two types of product, one ketene based and another is your aldehydes. So, it is like a simple chemistry, right? looks like a simple compound, you shine light, now you have to get so much of products and you keep on isolating one by one. Okay. That is good. So, these are the acyclic ketones major examples are these three. When you take an acyclic ketone, see when once a compound is given, for example, you are given an acyclic saturated ketone, then you first think whether it is a symmetrical. Okay. If it is both the arms are same, then you say yes, I have only one reaction here happening, one will be my de, uh, primary process that there will be no option because they are same. So, I will get only one cleavage and from that I have to think decarbonylation followed by my radical recombination. If my ketone where my both the arms are different, then first thing I have to see is that which radical will be formed, whether I am going stability of the radical, I will say that which, which should be formed. Once I figure out that part, 
then I will do my decarbonization, but writing radical recombination you will be thinking about the cross products. Initial case you are not thinking about the cross products when they are symmetrical. This time you have to think about your cross product. As you move then when you have a uh, ketone Uh, once you have your ketone, okay, then if you have a beta hydrogen on both the sides, in that case what you do is that you have your decarbonylation alpha cleavage products, then you get your decarbonylation, right. And the more importantly you have to get another secondary process that is your intramolecular hydrogen abstraction, okay. So, this part you should be see the sec the one which I have written that is your decarbonation radical recombination followed by your intramolecular hydrogen abstraction this process okay this plays a very important role in many reactions when you go for cyclic systems where you mostly see your intramolecular hydrogen abstraction reactions that is the formation of ketene and aldehydes will be regularly formed clear hmm? okay are you are you fine with three systems these are the three best examples of your acyclic systems Now, what we will do is that we will slowly try to understand um, <laughs> something like uh, I said that I have a C6, I, I have taken your first example that is C6H5 CS2 carbonyl CS2 C6H5. So, what happens? What two radicals I get in the Norwich type 1 process, primary process? I get one acyl radical mm -hmm. and I get an alkyl radical. How to know this that I am getting this radicals? Okay, you just do an alpha cleavage and you say that I get acyl radical and alkyl radical. How to know that I am getting this acyl radical and alkyl radical? Huh? Anyone? By? Yeah, you can do trapping experiments. Okay. Uh, see, once you do the trapping experiment, then you can find out whether these radicals are there. Um, so, the best uh, you can do a trapping experiment. So, what you regularly use to trap this type of radicals? Uh, you can use tempo. Okay. Tempo is normally used to trap this radical. I will write the structure of tempo. Right. It is a very good radical too because it is stable and you can use it. Uh, it can easily trap things. So, is if you know, know, want to know the name, it is 2, 2, 4, 4 tetramethyl uh, piperidine piperidine 1 oxide. Okay. This is a very good trapping agent. Okay. So, we will see how this can trap. If I have my C 6 H 5 C S 2 carbonyl C S 2 C 6 H 5. So, you know that it goes to singlet and then intersystem crossing to triplet, then it undergoes an alpha cleavage to give me C 6 H 5 C S 2 give me an acyl radical plus an alkyl radical. <coughs> if I have a tempo, when I do the photolysis, if I add tempo to the system and carry out my reaction, then what happens? So, this can combined with your acyl radical. So, you can get C 6 H 5 
CS2 carbonyl lipo. Yeah, it's better to write like this. Okay, you can get your ester or if it is going to trap here, then you will get C6H5, CH2O. can write it in this way itself. So, you can get your ether. Right? From the now this products are stable. So, you can isolate this products and take NMR. From that you will know that whether you whether this reaction actually you get this radical, acyl radical or alkyl radical. Fine. Okay. Now uh, we'll take, we'll spend little bit time to understand um, about alpha cleavage. Okay. Uh, I will take a very nice example like. Benzophenol. See whatever so far I was trying the systems, acyclic ketone systems, um, or you have acetophenol. This type of systems. Uh, if I shine light on, for example, I take benzophenol. Okay, I shine light on benzophenol. What do you expect? I shine light on benzophenone at 280 nanometer. What you can expect? Huh? So, you expect that it goes to singlet, then goes to triplet and undergoes an alpha cleavage to give you the product, but this does not happen at all. Okay? You cannot, benzophenone never undergoes any alpha cleavage reaction. Instead of that, it does very good energy transfer process. It is a very good sensitizer. You use benzophenone because if it undergoes alpha cleavage, then you are not going to use that as a sensitizer, right? So why it doesn't happen? Yes, sir. Yeah, the, that's why. No, that's why I took this example. It's not about only the stability of the radical we are talking about. Okay. The fundamental thing of n pi star transition is that, or any any chemistry, the photochemistry happens from the lowest excited state. What the photochemistry happens only from the lowest excited state. For example, I have a system where my n pi star is the lowest. Okay, then the photochemistry happens. If you take benzophenone, I have a ground state S zero. Okay, it's n pi star transition, that is your singlet n pi star. And same way, if you see, is this is singlet and pi star. It's a, if you see the energy is basically hundred kilocalories. It's hundred kilocalories per mole. Okay. But what happens is that it's it has a another thing, which is your pi pi star. In this transition, you have another that is it is it has this pi pi star transition also there at S1. That is if you see that is only a 76 kilocalories per mole. So, which is the lowest excited state now? Pi pi star, right? That is why you cannot see any n pi star reactivity here. Okay. So, that why I wa why, why I want to say that, see when you do an alpha cleavage, it not only depends on your radical formation. Yes, you have to see the radical formation. It not only depends on the radical formation. It also depends upon your, from which excited state it is happening. Okay. If your n pi star is the lowest excited state, then you can see Norwich type 1 reaction. If it is, see in this case what happens? The pi pi star is the lowest excited. So, you will see most of the pi pi star chemistry here. Clear? 
any doubt this you should know definitely any photochemistry happens only from the lowest excited state okay now I have written two examples right now. One is CH3 C double one thing, another is with the phenyl. Okay, now you know that which side it will cleave, okay, based on your tertiary metal radical. But I am asking now, among these two, which will react fast? Which which reaction, whether you are A or B? which will react. So, here you are going to talk with respect to radical stability or what you are going to talk about? Yes, energy, here you talk about your bond dissociation energy, right. So, how fast it is going to cleave. If you see the bond dissociation energy for your first one, that is for example, we call it as k alpha bond dissociation energy, how fast it goes, it is like 10 to the power of 9 second inverse. Okay. When I take for the lower one, it is approximately 10 to the power of 7 second inverse. See now, I am slowly bringing you another concept, right. So, I it is free radical stability you are going to talk then you are going to talk about your excited state, whether it, my compound is in the lower excited state, then you, are, then you have to understand which will be the faster dissociation also you should understand. For example, now you will know if I give you these three examples, you can easily understand. Yeah, it depends upon again the radical stability, but you should know I have a system like CS2 phenyl, system like phenyl carbonyl C replacing by 1 methyl a system like phenyl carbonyl I like this three systems <coughs> now we'll call this as again a b So, which will be cleaving fast or which C. So, if I see it is or if I see it is bond it is 1 into 10 to the power of 8 second inverse. It is just to you guys to understand okay? and this is 3 into 10 to the power of 7 and this is 2 into 10 to the power of 6. So, you should know um, basically the how fast the reaction goes when you are given like two system. Okay. If I put two together and did the photolysis what happens or among these three which will be the faster to give me the alpha cleavage why you have to learn all this chemistry to like uh, when you go competition between a Norwich type 1 and Norwich type 2 reaction, then you should know all these things. Because now I have just taken you a simple concept that is Norwich type 1 reaction. See the same compound if I take the ketone and try to I can if I have put an alpha uh, if I put a hydrogen in the gamma, then you will be thinking about your Norwich type 2 reaction, then you should be able to see whether it will go first Norwich type 1 or it predominantly gives me a Norwich type 2 reactions. For, for that you should know 
whether alpha cleavage process is faster, whether you get a stable radical, whether my excited state is lower, all this concept you should know. Right? So, uh, th this is how like uh, you can talk about your uh, acyclic ketone systems. Fine. This is your saturated acyclic ketones. I will just uh, if time permits I might show you something about saturated cyclic ketones. So, we have seen up to now a cyclic uh, thing, we will see now Okay, we will take saturated cyclic ketones. In this you can basically we will be working on 6 member ring. We'll working, we will be working on 5, five member ring system, 6 member ring system, we will be working on 5 member ring system. We will also we will concentrate on this ok. We will concentrate on this 3, uh, then we can take lot of examples, we have like 10 member, 12 member, we will do the example, but we will understand the chemistry of 6 member, 5 member, 4 member in detail ok. Then we will put examples for 10 member, 12 members or string systems like that we have to go okay. So, I will uh, take first example that is your uh, cyclohexanone, we will take a 6 member system or uh, it is uh, So, we have a cyclohexanone system. Okay. Uh, what we will do is that uh, we will try to understand cyclohexanone's photochemistry, okay. uh, whether what type of first what will be the primary process okay. and then we have to same way in the secondary process we have to see three types whether decarbonylation, radical recombination, then intramolecular hydrogen abstraction, there will be two different type process whether this all happens or any other extra thing also happens in this reaction. Okay. In cyclohexanone you will get radical recombination also happening. Okay. That depends upon your radical whether you are getting 1 4 di radical system or you getting 1 5 di radical system or 1 3 that also you have to understand. Okay. So, what we will do in the next class we will start directly from the 6 member ring system then we will see 4 mem 5 then 4 after finishing that then we will take a example of your beta gamma unsaturated ketones there we will take like 4 or 5 examples try to understand. Once we finish alpha cleavage then we will go for beta cleavage, hmm? then we will go for hydrogen abstraction reactions, this is our cleavage reactions, then we have to go for hydrogen abstraction reactions, clear. Hmm? So, we end up our class with this.